Hi, I'm Melinda Rose. And I'm Laura Marshall. And this is Light Matters for May 18th, 2011. In this week's Light Matters, we'll see internet-ready light bulbs, an advanced laser hits the road, an iconic Star Trek technology may become a reality, and a new flexible display technology wins Component of the Year from the Society for Information Display. What if every light bulb had its own unique IP address? You'd be able to monitor, manage, and control every light in your house from any internet-enabled device, turning lights off and on individually, dimming or creating scenes from your smartphone, tablet, PC, or TV to save energy as well as electricity costs. Your smart lighting system could have dozens or even hundreds of appliances connected through a wireless network designed for maximum energy savings, communicating information about their environment, about power consumption levels, and alerting you to any problems. This week, NXP Semiconductors introduced its green chip smart lighting technology, which it says will make such a network possible for businesses and consumers. Green chip, available in compact fluorescent or LED versions, reduces the requisite electronics to fit in an everyday light bulb. Green chip enabled light bulbs will be able to operate on the same wireless sensor networks you may be using at home for energy metering, smart appliances, and security systems. NXP's announcement comes just days after Google announced Android at Home, its plan to power a home's lights, appliances, and other electronics using its Android operating system. Have laser, will travel. Physicists at the National Institute of Standards and Technology showed how advanced lasers can be made both stable and transportable enough for field use by operating a super-stable laser in a cramped, vibrating location, a minivan. The drive tests, limited to a short excursion of five meters across the grass on the NIST campus, are a step toward taking the most advanced atomic clocks on the road. The infrared fiber laser's performance was evaluated with the vehicle stationary, with the motor both off and idling, and moving over uneven ground at speeds of less than 3.6 kilometers per hour. The laser frequency remains stable enough with the car parked, the most likely situation in the field, to be used in some applications now. The group has been building and using ultra-stable lasers for more than 10 years, but the ones they use for optical atomic clocks are quite large and have to be carefully isolated from seismic and acoustic vibrations. The new design is roughly 10 times more resistant to vibration or acceleration than the best radio frequency crystal oscillators and allows the laser to be made much smaller. The new laser will make it easier to use advanced atomic clocks for measuring and monitoring the size and shape of the Earth. It might also be used on moving platforms, perhaps in space-based physics experiments, or on Earth generating low-noise signals for radar. A bounty of $10 million will soon be offered for the successful development of a mobile device inspired by Star Trek's fictional tricorder that can diagnose patients as well as, or even better than, a panel of board-certified physicians. The Tricorder X Prize, a collaboration between the X Prize Foundation and Qualcomm, aims to encourage consumer empowerment in healthcare by extending the reach of health information and services to more people. This prize is expected to bring understandable, easily accessible health information and metrics to consumers on their mobile devices, pointing them to earlier actions for care. Here's a clip from the XPRIZE Foundation. A doctor? The nearest one to us is many, many miles away. But what if we had as many doctors as we had cell phones? What if the doctor was your cell phone? connected to an artificial intelligence. As smart as the very best trained human doctor with years of experience. That could understand and speak any language. And be there for you anytime, anywhere. Impossible. Love the Star Trek connection. Yeah, they even have a quote from Gene Roddenberry's son in their press release. So will we see this technology anytime soon? Well, actually, the contest's not going to launch until sometime next year, so it's still years away, I'm afraid. Taiwan's Industrial Technology Research Institute has won the Society for Information Display's Silver Display Component of the Year Award this week for being the first technology to allow for mass production and development of flexible and transparent displays of any size. ITRI, Taiwan's largest high-tech R&D institution, won for its flexible substrate that resolves the issues of overheating and cloudiness found in other flexible displays. In the past, high temperatures were required to fabricate transistors on flexible display substrates. When made on a soft plastic substrate, the transistors couldn't withstand temperatures ranging from 200 to 300 degrees Celsius and were easily destroyed. Adding inorganic materials to improve the substrate's heat resistance made the display less clear and bright. ITRI developed a unique process to combine the inorganic materials with traditional organic materials. 
The inorganic materials were positioned at the base of the substrate and then the organic materials were added. This successfully increased the proportion of silicon dioxide in the inorganic material from 20 to 40 percent up to 60 percent. This process greatly reduces the thermal expansion of the flexible substrate under high temperature conditions of up to 300 degrees and also makes it highly transparent so that the display is very clear, not yellow and cloudy. ITRI's flexible substrate for displays is compatible with existing thin film transistor infrastructures and processes and can be manufactured with either batch type or roll-to-roll -roll processes. To date, a flexible color filter, active matrix electrophoretic display, and a flexible touch film have been made on the ITRI flexible substrate. The flexible display market is predicted to surge from $280 million in 2010 to $5.9 billion in 2015 and $12.2 billion by 2017, according to a Display Bank report. And before we leave you this week, Light Matters needs your votes. We've entered a contest for business videos and the top vote getters make the finals. You'll find a link to the voting page on photonics.com's homepage. Okay. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. For more on any of these stories, visit photonics.com. To subscribe to our newscast, you can click on the share icon on this video player and choose feeds to enter your subscription directly into iTunes or any other RSS program. There are also icons to share this video on most social media sites. Please send your questions or comments to lightmatters at photonics.com or find Photonics Media on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Melinda and I will both be at Laser Munich next week and we'll have reports from the show. We'll see you then.